Hi, I'm the Woodpecker today. I'm making a new thermostat for the shop. And if you can bear staying up until the end, you'll see that it does way more than just starting the heater. Last year, I built this thermostat for the shop. I was super happy. But after several months, problems developed and I was not that happy anymore. Here you can see that rebooting over 42,000 times in six months is not really reliable. But I was still able to collect some temperature and eating statistics. The red line is the temperature and the purple lines are showing when the heat was turned on. But starting the heater in July at this temperature was unacceptable. So I disconnected it. Before the cold came back, I started to work on this new one. But this time around, I went all in. It controls many more things than the heater. Five months like this on the table, is enough. I will make a box for it. Since I want a round box, I start by drawing it in Aspire. It's quite simple. Only three tiers of different wood species and height. After drawing the vectors, I made the tool paths and now I can look at them. This will be the front of the box, the thicker one. It's just what I had in mind. Then the middle tier. This looks good. And finally, the back cover. With all those tool pads, I can cut this. I begin with the front on a leftover piece of maple from the last urn I made. This is the thickest piece and also the longest one to carve. The other two layers were glue ups, like those two walnut half circles. I have to make sure both glue ups are straight. Then I can go back to the CNC and cut both of them. It's only when it was all done that I realized that I forgot to cut the inside lid a bit smaller because it doesn't fit. I need to use a rasp to fix this. Perfect. It fits now, but I still need to cut the tabs from the front. The inside has to be smooth for the LCD. I use a square file for the corners. But it's only when I try the LCD in place that I notice that I didn't take my measurements correctly. It's not wide enough. I wasn't expecting so much hand work on this. Now that the LCD fits, I can glue both pieces together. All I need to do is to wait for the glue to dry. Meanwhile, I can drill the holes for the back cover. Now that the glue is dry, it's possible to screw the back in place and sand the outside of the box. When I'm satisfied with it, I wipe some linseed oil on it. I leave this like that until the next morning. After finding the center of the lid, I drill a hole for the magnet. Then it's possible to glue it in place with some epoxy. And then I have the brilliant idea to glue the LCD in place without checking if the rest of the circuit fits. 
and obviously if the opening wasn't big enough, the rest is also too small. The PCB doesn't fit in the box. I need to cut part of it. One thing I can say is that it would have been much simpler if both layers were not glued together. I make several cuts, then it's easier to give it the shape I want. After checking <laughs> this time that everything fits, I glue back the LCD in place and plug the rest of the circuit to it. All I need to do is check if it's still working. I plug this into the outlet, the Raspberry Pi boots, and my thermostat starts by itself. For the curious ones, here are the features of my thermostat. The brain behind all this is this Raspberry Pi Zero. It's hooked up to the PCB I designed to prototype a Raspberry Pi. When it's all hooked up together, I have access to all its functions. But uh, we can't see much like that. One of the advantages of using a Raspberry Pi is its ability to have its output on a remote computer. Here, we actually see what's on the LCD in the shop. On the main tab, you can see the time, the temperature, the atmospheric pressure, and the graphic of the temperature since midnight. But let me show you a more interesting background. <laughs> this is way better, because we can see that my CNC is working. On the main tab, we can also see that it's daytime. <laughs> okay, I know that this seems mm, not so useful when you just have to look outside. But this is to prevent it from starting the heating system at night in case of a false detection. Speaking of detection, it's here that I can see that a camera has detected a presence. There are a lot of settings. It's the reason why I have so many tabs. The first one is for all the thermostat settings. The ideal temperature, the lowest allowed, and so on. I also have a tab that lets me start the heater from the house to make sure I enter a heated shop. Another tab lists all the Wi-Fi commands the thermostat has received. Here we can see the commands to start and stop the vacuum and also which camera has detected me so far. But let me give you a small demonstration. I will simulate the command I sent from my phone to start the dust collector. Here you can see that the program has received the command. To be sure the dust collector is on, we can check on the main tab. Here we can see that it's working and that it draws a current of about 9 amperes. If I simulate the stop button, we can see the current is now at zero, so the dust collector has stopped. I also made a tab that has all the same buttons that my telephone has. To show this, I will press the button that starts this lamp. In fact, this lamp is hooked up to my small vacuum, which sucks the dust from the CNC. Obviously, when I press the stop button, the lamp turns off. I can also start the air filter remotely with this button. You can clearly see that the air filter is now working. It can be turned off as easily. The AC tab is for checking and adjusting the AC current sensor that reads the current taken by my tools. The filter tab is for all the settings that the filter requires. Since it's also Bluetooth, I also have everything to find and connect to the device. The LCD is very small and I didn't want to waste space on a title bar. So in this tab, I have all the buttons of a title bar and the possibility to schedule the RF AC outlet. The CNC tab writes all the data that the CNC pump module is transmitting. Here we can see that the ambient temperature over there is 20 degrees Celsius and the water of the spindle is 21 degrees. By knowing how much water is pumped, the program knows if the spindle is running or not. There are also the adjustments to set how many seconds the vacuum will be running. Here it's set for 30 seconds every 2 minutes. 
you'll see that it will automatically start soon. One of the tabs shows graphically how many hours the heater has been working. You can also see that in 2022, the heater was on for 566 hours, for an estimate of $283. I figure mm, it's a bit less, because I set the calculation to be 10 cents per kilowatt, and I know it's a bit less than that. Finally, I have a tab that shows me how much time my big tools worked. As you can see, this function was only implemented in mid-January. <laughs> and this anomaly is because the relay that starts my dust collector got stuck. And the dust collector ran continuously for a full day. But besides this, it's possible to see that my compressor is really the most used tool in my shop. To see that more clearly, let's go and check for the month of April. Here, it's more obvious to see that it's the compressor that worked for the longest time. Oh yes, uh, I told you that the vacuum would start by itself. Uh, it's because we just passed the 2 minute threshold. This was my brand new thermostat in my shop. <laughs> I know, this has been a super boring episode, but I worked hundreds of hours on this and I wanted to share it with you. Maybe I've inspired a couple of you to do something similar for your own shop. Before programming this, I had never programmed in Python. So if I can do it, so can you. And see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker.